Breaking news, Sean P. Diddy Combs has been arrested and indicted on federal charges. The disgraced music icon has faced startling allegations for months of rape, sexual assault, physical abuse, gun trafficking, and drug trafficking. On Monday evening, he was indicted by a grand jury in New York. He was taken into custody in Manhattan, where he's been for the last week in anticipation of these charges. Now, the charges haven't been made public just yet. In fact, the indictment was sealed. But according to the New York Times, a person familiar with the prosecution says they believe Diddy faces charges of racketeering and sex trafficking. Diddy's legal team said they were disappointed with the decision to prosecute, but mentioned their client has been cooperative with law enforcement. A statement from his legal team reads, quote, Sean Diddy Combs is a music icon, self-made entrepreneur, loving family man, and proven philanthropist who has spent the last 30 years building an empire, adoring his children, and working to uplift the black community. He is an imperfect person, but is not criminal. To his credit, Mr. Combs has been nothing but cooperative with this investigation, and he voluntarily relocated to New York last week in anticipation of these charges. Please reserve your judgment until you have all the facts. These are the acts of an innocent man with nothing to hide, and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. All this comes about six months after two of Diddy's homes were raided by federal investigators back in March. Then we couldn't confirm Diddy was the target of the Homeland Security raids or what information the feds collected. Most of what we know came from the five civil suits with a series of shocking allegations ranging from the 90s until now. Multiple people alleged Diddy raped them, drugged them, and recorded all of that. We can't confirm it just yet, but it was likely those civil lawsuits that led up to the federal investigation and later Diddy's arrest. This is breaking news that is constantly developing, so stay with Law & Crime for all the latest updates. For now, let's take a look back at the allegations leading up to Diddy's arrest. For the past three decades, we've come to know Sean Combs as multiple different names. P. Diddy, Puffy, Puff Daddy, Puff. The 54-year-old is a rapper, entrepreneur, and label exec. Things changed for him on March 25th when Homeland Security raided two of his homes one in California and the other in Florida. There's no word yet whether Diddy himself was the target of those raids and he's not been charged criminally. That being said, some allegations of his criminal past became a major topic of conversation when news of the raids broke. That's what was so stunning when Cassie Ventura filed her lawsuit earlier this year. It kind of broke the dam and it was just the floodgates opened and all of these other allegations started to come to the surface. That's Melba Pearson, a former prosecutor who's followed the Diddy case meticulously since it broke. Her interest actually dates back farther than just last month, when Diddy's bad boy for life mantra was just a song. And we know about the allegations now that have happened in the past couple months via these civil suits. But if we go back, I know that you have kind of followed Diddy for a while and you're pretty knowledgeable about that era. From the 90s until now, prior to these civil lawsuits being filed, was there talk of wrongdoing on Diddy's behalf? There really wasn't. You know, to, to compare him to R. Kelly, for instance, there were rumors swirling around R. Kelly from the beginning. And, and that started off with his marriage to a very underage Aaliyah. And that's when folks were like, hmm, OK, something doesn't seem right here. But like kind of put it to the side, just kind of put a pin in it for a few decades until all the bombshell allegations and well ended up being proved in, in a court of law came for, you know came forth i i feel like with diddy we didn't hear that much we knew that he partied hard we knew that he was always going to high profile events and all of that but I personally have never heard any rumors surrounding uh, any wrongdoing or anything having to do with him. This is an artist who really came to prominence in the 90s. We remember all of the videos. He was very close with uh, Biggie Smalls, who also tragically lost his life um, you know, back in the early, late 1990s, early 2000s. Um, and so he was somebody who had this whole orbit around him. And so many different artists like Maze and you know all these different folks that sprung out from this record label and 
orbit that they were in. So he had a huge impact on what R&B and hip hop looked like in the 90s and the 2000s and continue to be influential today in terms of other artists that have, you know, gained prominence and gained fame, as well as him as a producer, having this really huge presence in the industry. So absolutely, this is a bombshell. And this is something where the impact is going to be reverberating around the globe for a variety of reasons. But during this era, Diddy did have some trouble with the law. Back in 1999, he was arrested and charged in a shooting at a New York nightclub. His then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and rapper Shine were also arrested. JLo's charges were dropped, but it was Shine who faced the most serious charges, three counts of attempted murder and criminal possession of a weapon. Ultimately, both Diddy and Shine went to trial. Diddy was acquitted, but Shine was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. He was released in 2009 and deported back to his home country of Belize. If we're looking at it in the 1999 lens or the early 2000s when they went to trial, what was everyone making of it then? So I think people were not like horrified per se. I think they looked at it as, well, this is part and parcel of the hip hop industry. I don't think it was very shocking because, you know, there's definitely a perception somewhat reality as well that there is violence in the hip hop community and sort of that beef between different groups or different labels. We all know about the East Coast, West Coast beef that was going on during the 90s with Tupac on, on one side, Biggie on the other. So this was something that was uh, an outgrowth of that time frame. So I don't think folks were super shocked at that juncture. Um, I think what was more shocking was sort of Jennifer Lopez's involvement in all of this, because I don't think, even though she was like, yeah, I'm Jenny from the block, I don't think anybody really saw her as really going to be that quote unquote that chick who is you know coming with the, the firearm and is gonna you know hold it down and ride or die for her man like i don't think people really saw that of her so i think that was the most shocking part of the case back in 1999. so we've got these allegations that diddy was responsible as the shooter but also allegations that j-lo carried the weapon that diddy used in the shooting What's interesting here is that Cassandra Ventura, known publicly as the singer Cassie, says Diddy made her do the same thing. She filed a lawsuit in November of last year, laying out some pretty severe allegations about Diddy. To start, there's that gun allegation that on at least two occasions, Diddy demanded Cassie hold his gun in her purse. The lawsuit goes on to state, quote, there was no clear reason why Mr. Combs required her to hold his gun except to reinforce to his young girlfriend that he was violent, powerful, and dangerous. Not only did Jennifer Lopez allegedly bring the gun to the club, now we're also looking at years later, Cassie coming forward and saying that Diddy forced her to carry a gun with her when they went out to different events. So again, I think that this is more along the lines of when you look at this from a domestic violence lens, from the standpoint of the abuser being very controlling and demanding certain activities to prove loyalty to, uh, you know, basically put yourself in an, a bad situation where only he can be the one to save you, basically. Um, so in seeing that the parallels between JLo's experience and Cassie's experience, number one, it brings more credibility to what Cassie said in her pleadings. But also, again, it causes us to look at Jennifer Lopez and be like some of the comments she made about the end of her relationship to Diddy in terms of, well, you know, there was infidelity and, you know, she kind of skirted the issue a bit. But when you start to look back at your co her comments, you start to think, ooh, were you in a domestic violence relationship with Diddy, much like how Cassie ended up in a domestic violence relationship with him? What would have made her want to come forward? And what did you take away from that civil suit? So the reason why she came forward at this juncture is because New York and California both passed laws around uh, which was called the Adult Survivor Act. So that basically extends the statute of limitations. And it's interesting that several more people have come forward. There's four additional lawsuits to Cassie's and several of them mention Cassie by name and say, hey, because she came forward and told us about these allegations, we felt comfortable doing the same thing. So did it really backfire for Diddy then? 
Uh, I think it did. I think it did. Because if this had been settled without any kind of public involvement, any kind of media coverage, these other people may never have come forward. So by, you know, kind of calling her bluff and saying, oh, yeah, yeah there's no way you're going to file this. He did himself a whole lot of damage, but I'm glad because at least now the truth is going to come out and everyone will know who this person is. And now, of course, that kicked everything into high gear in terms of law enforcement involvement and investigations. So as much as this whole thing is is, is sad and sordid, I'm glad that it's coming out so that more survivors can get the closure that they need and that he can be brought to justice for the crimes he's perpetrated on others. Among those other lawsuits, another filed under the New York Survivors Act by Joy Dickerson Neal. Her allegations date back to 1991 when she was a student at Syracuse University. Joy says Diddy intentionally drugged her, resulting in her being in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk. Joy also alleges she's a victim of revenge porn because Diddy allegedly recorded the rape and passed around that videotape. According to her suit, Joy demands a jury trial, as does Liza Gardner, who also says Diddy raped her in New York in the 90s. According to her civil suit, Liza and her friend met Diddy at a party and later went with him to an after party where she, quote, was offered more drinks and coerced into having sex with Combs. Liza says Diddy and another man raped her and her friend. Later on, she says Diddy choked her to the point that she lost consciousness. While Jane Doe doesn't list her name in the lawsuit, she does list multiple photos of herself and Diddy. Her allegations date back to 2003, when she was just 17 years old and in 11th grade. Her lawsuit states at this time, Diddy was twice her age and one of the most well-known and influential music artists of all time. Jane Doe alleges Diddy flew her from Michigan to New York on a private plane and raped her in a recording studio. All this leads us back to Lil Rod's 74-page lawsuit that was filed back in February, detailing a laundry list of wild accusations. Melba says all this parallels a trajectory we've seen before. Oh, it absolutely is a fall from grace. I have no question in my mind that this is going to be the end of Diddy as we know him, right? And the next chapter is going to be him incarcerated, much like R. Kelly. Um, and, and which is, of course, sad, tragic, and horrible, not only for him, but more importantly for the survivors who have gone through some horrific, horrific, horrific experiences. Um, but yeah, I think this is definitely going to be the end because with all of the allegations that have come forward and come forth at this juncture, um, all the artists that have come forward alleging wrongdoing, I can't see how he gets out of this. I just can't. According to Lil Rod's lawsuit, he lived with Diddy for months at a time while working on Diddy's love album. During this time, he says Diddy sexually assaulted him, forced him to have sex with prostitutes, and drugged him. On top of all this, Lil Rod says his allegations are corroborated with hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in some serious illegal activity because Diddy apparently required Lil Rod to record him constantly. The lawsuit even lays out some pictures, like this one, showing Cuba Gooding Jr. with his arm around Lil Rod. According to the suit, Lil Rod alleges Diddy was, quote, grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. Court documents go on to state, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones' legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. But then there are other defendants listed, like corporations such as Universal Music Group and Motown Records, along with their higher-ups. To understand this, I spoke to entertainment attorney Mitra Ohurian. In addition to these uh, record labels that are listed as defendants, they also list CEOs, a former CEO of Motown Records and then a current CEO of UMG. So I'm wondering why, in addition to these labels, are they listing the CEOs? Yeah, they're trying to pierce the corporate veil. They're trying to say that, you know, you as individuals also were aware of these things happening. Someone we know for sure is speaking with investigators, though, is Cassie. Melva says she's not surprised. 
Um, I expect that she would have, um, because again, if she's telling the truth, then she's going to give any evidence that she has. So in terms of if there's recording she knows existed, right? I mean, she may not have possession of it, but she could be like, listen, in July of, you know, 2005, you know, he forced me to do X, Y, Z at, you know, this particular hotel. There may be surveillance footage to show me going in and out of the building. There may be a video that he took of the um, horrible events that may have happened that day. So now at least law enforcement will know exactly where to look and start to narrow down different timelines and then also speak to other witnesses or maybe other survivors that were present and victimized at another point in time, but they can help corroborate some of what she's saying. And that is going to help put together the case against Diddy, likely for human trafficking, for sex trafficking, narcotics charges, et cetera. So what we believe is that the Cassie lawsuit kind of spurred this investigation. But is it possible that Lil Rod's bombshell lawsuit that came out in February is really what kicked it into high gear? Because there we learned about the many hours, he says hundreds of hours of recordings. And then as we know, federal investigators were at multiple of his homes. Could those two things be correlated? Oh, they absolutely are. They absolutely are. I would think that the feds or law enforcement was investigating from when Cassie's lawsuit was filed, but now they have additional fuel for the fire. So now in reading Little Rod's lawsuit, now we're getting into drug use. We're getting into drug trafficking. We're getting into mules. We're getting into pink cocaine. Who knew? Um, and so you're hearing and seeing all of these other allegations that now the feds can be like, okay, now I know I need to look for surveillance tapes. Now I need, know I need to look for this, this aspect. Now I need to speak to these folks because they were listed in Little Rod's um, you know, lawsuit. All of that leads us up to right now and the speculation of what's next for Diddy. As far as Diddy's name, who's all over multiple of these lawsuits, I mean, he's the main kingpin in all of this. He may be facing some reputational damage, but I'm wondering what's going on behind closed doors with him and his attorneys? What sort of game plan are they making? Well, I'm going to say that that is going to be a very active war room right now because basically they're going to be scrambling to figure out how to avoid criminal liability. Um, who are the people that are likely to testify against him? Um, can they try and mitigate that in any way, which I don't think they can. And then also preparing for criminal charges being filed and starting to think through what a defense strategy could look like. Uh, making sure that you have bond money set up in case you know there, there's bond available for whatever offenses he's charged with. And then, okay, making sure you have money set aside that wouldn't be uh, you know otherwise encumbered because, you know, for whatever reason, right? I mean, there's a number of reasons why you may not be able to get cash out right away. Let's say if the cash is tied up in your house, you may not be able to get access to it right away. So you may want to have a separate pool just to be able to pay for that, right? So these are some of the logistics that his defense team might be looking at in preparation for the charges that will come, because there's no question in my mind charges will come. This story is constantly evolving with new information coming out daily. For updates in Diddy's case, make sure to check back right here with Long Crime for the latest. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.